Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I didn't agree with the lady Anne, but you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, really, really good. But the problem is, 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 um. Okay. The climax of the play. Get my talk. Is this moment. The, the climax of the play is this moment where Macbeth is sitting there, and his, his castle is, is being uh, attacked, and he hears this woman scream, and uh, he sends his, his uh, minion out to find out who's screaming in the castle, and, and while we're waiting to find out what that news is, he turns to the audience and says, you know what? I'm dead. Things that used to frighten me and make the hair stand up on the back of my neck, they just don't do anything for me. I don't feel anything. Minion comes back. What was that noise? The queen, my lord, is dead. And there's this huge pause in the verse. And the audience is now thinking, now he'll care about that. Because we've seen them in the first act, they love each other so much. Now he's, now he's going to feel something. And he just goes, she should have died tomorrow or yesterday. I would have had time to deal with it. I, I, I don't feel it. And that's when the audience realizes that Macbeth is not our guy. And that's when we meet, uh, in the next scene, we go to England and we meet our hero, uh, Macduff. Um, so for that to work, for that to work, the pause has to work, where everyone's on the edge of their seat going, now they'll feel something, right? And for that to work, when Lady Macbeth says the out damn spot speech, they have to cry. And, if the, and, and, and in order to get them to cry for out damn spot, she can't be a castrating bitch in the first act, because if she's a castrating bitch in the first act, then she comes out for, for out damn spot, and everyone's like, oh, die, bitch, die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so I thought that some things were right about that, but that, that, that was ruined because because they, they took that slant on Lady Anne, and it's just so misogynistic, and it's just not in the, 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 the script. I remember arguing with Peter Hall, who invented the RSC, and he he uh, he came to L.A. to direct a couple of Shakespeare's for the taper, and I went into audition, and he casually mentioned Lady Anne, the cast of the bitch, and I just went off. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to get this job. And I'm going to tell everyone for my life that I, I told Peter Hall what he was And he was looking at me like, you? You upstart America, how dare you? <laughs> but I was right. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts about Twilight? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't understand why we have to soften up the vampire yes. character. I, 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 I don't know why you have to run away from the fact that there are badass evil vampires, man. Uh, you, can, you should write romantic human beings if you want to do that, you know? But why call them vampires anymore? You know, they're not fighting people. Like, I don't really want to hurt you. What? <laughs> what kind of vampires? But on the other hand, you know, my niece loves them. And she reads them constantly, and she's all off on other vampire romance and all this stuff. But she started really reading books, like every day, like 500 pages a day. And now she's starting to write her own story. So it, it did good on that level. I just, for myself, I don't, I don't find it really very exciting. I, I want, like, what was that, uh, was that film? The Vampire's, uh, Vampire's Assistant. No, no. <laughs> oh, man, it was, uh... In 30 Days Night? No, it was a long time ago. You're dark. You're dark. You're dark. Lost, Boys. Lost Boys was good. Lost Boys was really good. Yeah, they had some vampires. Awesome. Wasn't that scary? What's up in the back? Just an informative piece. I'm a uh, youth counselor, uh, uh -huh. Lake Overnight, for about 15 students. Really kind of tough students, ranging from 15 to 17, 18. Uh -huh. And uh, the last few months, their routine, their bedtime routine uh, has been to all gather around the couch and they're watching Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> Most of their problems are, are substance abuse problems. It's really funny because when you see them in their communities, you know, these are tough kids and they're all posturing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they're like, oh, it's 8 o'clock, i got to go watch Buffy. <laughs> it's a good show. Okay. It, it really I, is. I didn't write it, I didn't direct it, I didn't produce it. I stood on tape and I wore the hair they told me, so I can say, I like that show. Spike, <laughs> Spike is their, like, hero. There, there's a couple of uh, fan arts on their community walls of Spike. If your schedule permits it, just like a two-minute uh, thing after this, mm -hmm. uh, on my phone, just uh, say, hi, thanks for watching. That would be the biggest thing for them. Yeah, come by, come by in the autograph line, man. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. 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 Definitely.
Oh, I'm going to autograph, so we can do that pretty soon. I'll see you there. All right. Thank you.